my name is Pat Riesenberger and today I'd like to do a very quick tutorial on how to make a felted and crystal embellished headband. First we're going to talk about the supplies. You're going to need a little bit of wool. Right now I've got about oh three or four dollars worth of merino wool, all black. So I've got a table set up with a towel, some bubble wrap, and some tools. And I also need some soapy water, some sort of a, a container, and a, uh, some sort of a stick or paddle that I can, I can use later when I'm working with hot water. Okay, so to begin, we're going to lay out the wool. I'm going to grab a little piece to work with. And one of the things that you'll notice when you're working with wool is that the further away your hands are when you're separating it, the easier, easier it will be for you to pull. If you put your hands together, it, you can pull all day long and you're not going to separate those fibers. So what I'd like to do is grab, grab the wool and separate it so that I've got a manageable piece. And then I'm going to shingle it by putting my hand on one end and gently pulling away. The fibers will separate naturally at their breaking point, making it very easy for me to layer. I wool about 16, 17, 18 inches so that I can accommodate for any cutting that I'm going to do later, as well as the natural shrinkage that will occur as I'm doing the felting process. So. Okay, so I've got enough wool laid out in one direction, and in order to make this fiber very strong, I'm going to lay out another layer in a, in a perpendicular direction. When I'm felting larger pieces, I'll typically layer on three or four um, layers. Since this is such a small project and it's not going to get a lot of hard use, it's just going to be for a headband sitting on my head, um, I'm not going to worry about making it real, real uh, thick. So two layers should suffice and we'll be ready to get started with the felting. Cover the piece with tool and then I've got some olive oil soap solution which I've made up ahead of time. Um, olive oil is really great to work with when you're felting. It doesn't suds up like um, dish soap uh, which many people use successfully will. It's just easier and cleaner. For, uh, from my perspective. So I'm going to sprinkle the water onto the piece and I'm going to saturate it pretty good. I know that there are many other teachers out there that have a very light touch. Um, not me. I, I work pretty heavy. Okay, so now I'm going to gently just press the fibers down so that the water and the soap solution is migrating through the piece. Okay, and pressing the fibers in. Now at this point, if I was making a larger piece, I would get a pool noodle, such as one that I've got here, and roll the piece up into a jelly roll. I, I find that on a, such a tiny little piece, that's really not necessary, and I can very quickly let my hands do the work, and I'll have a felted piece in no time. Usually I'll have some music on, and I'll do this for the course of the song, and that should be more than I need. Okay, so I'd like to see if I'm developing what's called a skin on my fiber. So I'm going to pull up the tool, and you can see that the, the fibers are starting to, to pull together. Although if I do a pinch test, they're nowhere near ready. I see the fibers are all separating, and um, that we haven't quite felt it yet. So I'm going to keep, with the, uh, keep working on the rubbing. I like to work with the tool covering the piece because it captures my fibers. Um, many artists find that they don't need the tool. I am not one of those. Talking about what other people do, this is a really good time to let you know that everybody operates differently. Felting is a very forgiving craft and if you find something that works for you, do it. And it may be different than, than what I've said in the past or what another instructor has told you. Um, I find that comfortable for you, you'll wind up with a piece that you love or you'll learn something. Okay, I've been rubbing uh, gently but, but firmly, if that makes sense. I'm pretty consistent. I'm not putting uh, a lot of muscle and sweat into this at this point. I'm just uh, getting the fibers to start going out and migrating and locking into one another so that we can go from, from a merino to a, a, um, a fabric, basically. All right, let's check our progress. 
you can see I, I do have quite a bit of suds here, despite what I said about the olive oil soap. I went heavy on the olive oil, I guess, or the soap, I guess. Okay, I'm starting to get some fabric. Um, I don't know if you can see it. I see a little hole developing here. Uh, that doesn't bother me I, because I'm going to be cutting away in order to, to um, form the headband. So I'm not worried about that at this point. And now what I'd like to do is rub a little bit more vigorously because we really want to get this thing now ready to, for the next stage. So we're, we've felted, now we're, we're fulling. Uh, and that's what's going to really strengthen this fiber and we'll get some shrinkage here. So I'm rubbing very aggressively into the bubble wrap, flipping it over, I'm kind of manhandling it. Now I'm just going to throw it into the bubble wrap. Make sure that you have clothes that you don't mind getting a little soapy on when you do this project. And you'll see that we've really got a much smaller piece of um, felt now. And I'm going to do that for a few more minutes and then we'll go on to the next step. Okay. I've taken the opportunity to rinse off my felt so I can get some of that soap out of it. And now I am going to make sure that I have more than enough just by eyeball to go around my the um, headband. Perfect. I've got more than enough to get what I need and, and have plenty of, of room to trim. Okay. The next step in this process is the, is the final fulling. I like to, to put my pieces, particularly when they're pretty hardy like this is, as opposed to some finer Nuno felting, I like to submerge them in very, very hot water for the final shock and shrinkage. Um, for that, I use a, a little kettle that I got for under $20 at Target. It's, an, it's electric and it heats the water up to boiling within seconds. It's wonderful. Um, drop that in there. And now I'm going to let it sit for a few minutes so that we can get a little bit more shrinkage and then we'll be ready to, to cut it and shape it. Okay, the piece has been sitting in the hot water for about 10 minutes. It's still pretty hot to the touch, so I'm not going to reach my fingers in there. I've done that too many times, I finally learned. Um, and we're going to take out some of the extra water here and get this piece ready to go. Now, normally I would let this air dry in uh, probably 24 hours in order for it to be dry enough for me to use a hot glue gun on. Um, I'm going to cheat and I'm going to throw this piece into the dryer. I wouldn't recommend doing that. What, what it will do is, is make all the fibers really tighten up and get kind of thick. Uh, I don't mind it for a hair head piece, but if I were making um, you know, a shawl or something, you know, the, the dryer would be my enemy, personally. Um, okay, we'll be back in a second. We now have a relatively dry piece of felt. I know that there are a lot of you out there who would have designed a template for this and would be would have no waste and it would be perfect. That's not where I live. I pretty much do things by the seat of my pants. I know it's going to be good enough for me. I know it's going to work. I know it's going to look good. And so I'm just going to do this um, kind of cut as we go. So I'm going to match up the, um, the fabric. I can see that I've got plenty. I've actually got more than I need, so I'm going to start cutting just so that I can get a basic shape. I'm going to get rid of all this extra waste, so I'm cutting out the hole that I saw before. I knew it wouldn't impact me, so I'm just going to make this piece a little bit more manageable in size for me. Once I trim, you'll see that I've, done, I've created what's called a wound on the fiber. Um, and we'll have to get a close-up of this so that you can really see what I'm talking about. The edge that I've cut is now kind of thick as opposed to a felted edge which has a nice kind of smooth side. I don't know if that's real visible to you. Um, if that was going to bother me, if, if that was going to be visible, I would get out my bubble wrap, dip my piece into a little soapy water, and rub it vigorously against the bubble wrap massage the edge a little bit and that would close the wound, it would heal the wound and both sides would look the same. Um, for, that's what you should do. For purposes of this demonstration I'm skipping it because that rough edge will be glued um, to the, uh, to the um, headband. Okay, so now I've got a hot glue gun set up and what I'm going to do is just start gluing the fiber to the piece. 
I'm going to leave it hanging over a bit because we're going to tuck that edge down a little bit later. But right now, I just want to get the top on. Some of you may be wondering why I've chosen not to do my embellishment before putting the piece together. Um, it's real simple. I found that because I don't use templates and I'm not as careful as others might be, um, were I to sew them on and then try to apply it, I could guarantee that it would be off. My lines would be off. It wouldn't work. So this way I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to assemble the piece and then I can take some time and really carefully apply all of my um, embellishments. Okay, so the piece, the headband is firmly attached to the front, but now I've got these ends that I want to tuck over. And so what I'm going to do is, again, apply some hot glue to the inside of the piece. I'm going to tuck over my end first, and then just fold over my piece. So I'm using a, a, um, a tool to help me avoid the injury that I've suffered in the past. Okay, I'm going to finish that and we'll be right back. Okay, we've gone ahead and glued the headband together, so now I have a simple black headband that, that will work beautifully, but it's a little plain and I like a lot of glitz when I go out. So what I'm going to do is choose some of the, the Swarovski embellishments that I've got here. Um, the hot fix, as I mentioned, are very easy. And were I to use one of these, I would simply place it where I want it to be, cover it with a piece of cotton, and then put a hot iron on it. Uh, leave the higher hot iron on for about 30 seconds or so, maybe a minute. That should be all that you need. Uh, okay, what I'm going to do is use some, um, uh, some of the larger sew-on stones from Swarovski and um, sew them on. Okay, I'm going to be off center here. What, I, what I'm using is some Fireline. For those of you who are not familiar with Swarovski products, the crystal has very sharp edges, and if you were to try to sew it on with any kind of a, a thread, the, the crystal would actually cut through the thread and you would lose your piece. The fire line is made of kind of like a fishing line. It's very, very thin though, and I always work with smoke. It's available in two colors, crystal and smoke, but the smoke is a light gray that kind of disappears into the, um, the material, and so you don't notice it quite as much as the, the white color. All right, what I'm going to do is not even tie a knot into um, the end of my thread. I'm really wanting to bury the end into my, into my piece. So I'm going to put the, uh, uh, put the needle into the piece and I'm going to draw through holding with my thumb so I don't pull the piece out and I'm going to tie a little invisible knot that we're not going to have to worry about later. No one's going to see it, but it'll secure my thread to the piece. Okay, I would do that a couple of times to make sure that it was really secure. And then I'm going to start sewing the piece on. And one of the things that you will have to deal with if you're attaching your embellishments after you have already adhered your, um, your felt to the headband is that you will need to have a little bit more um, ingenuity when it comes to, to putting the needle through the hole. I can't go straight through. I've got a plastic surface impeding my, my progress. So what I'll do is I'll um, put the needle into the, into the piece and come out the side. You're not going to see the thread. It's not going to impact anything that you're doing, but it will make it a lot easier and less frustrating to sew your piece together. So rather than sewing it straight down, I'm going sideways and, and the fabric will actually serve to hide the thread for me. I'm burying the thread within the fiber. On the very last of my stones, I've got a little bit of a tail left, so I'm going to knot it where I've exited the fiber and then go in and bury the tail deep within so that we don't have to worry about it ever making an appearance again. So in about a half an hour to an hour at the most, you can have a, a wonderful headband, looks great. Um, I was at Nordstrom's recently and noticed that they had some um, also embellished with Swarovski crystal that were retailing for about $75. You can create one of these for a fraction of the cost. It'll be a nice way to get your customers introduced to the idea of felt making. So get on out there and rock the headband.